Well, hey there team and welcome back to the channel and welcome to Sunless Skies. Specifically, we're looking at the Sovereign Edition. It's just come out. I'm playing the Steam version. It's an update to the existing version, but it does coincide with the, like, I believe it's Xbox, PlayStation and Switch release. So the Sovereign Edition has been released on the consoles, um, but it's not just a port or the base version. There's a lot of overhauls of the starvation mechanic. The uh, character progression system's been overhauled. They've added a new exotic train. That sounds cool. So there's actually quite a bit there for the new and old. Um, this music I find so personally affecting. I'm such a audiophile though when it comes to just music in games and mood in general, right? Not to go down that rabbit hole, but I find this soundtrack to be something else. Um, and this is one of my favorite games of all time. And uh, look, any excuse to put it back on the channel in 2021 suits me just fine. So what is Sunless Skies? Well, I mean, there's a bit of a long tail on it. It's a, uh, look, it's a cosmic horror-esque, you know, that sort of um, Cthulhu-y, I guess, uh, way of doing horror. Uh, yeah, cosmic horror is probably the best way to put it. It is part of a universe, I believe, the Fallen London series, which in itself is a free browser game. I never actually played that myself. It went on to have a spin-off expansion slash own game called Sunless Seas, and it was uh, followed by this Sunless Skies. So there is actually, this is sort of a pseudo sequel, um, and you cruise around in a little top-down uh, in this, it's a, like a, a space train, <laughs> a train going through the sky, right? But for all intents and purposes, like Sun the Sea, it's essentially like being a seafaring person, right? You're essentially a captain, and you're going on these sort of adventures from port to port. There's a lot of trade. In fact, trade is a big core mechanic and understanding how it works. Try not to go anywhere with your hull empty. Huge exploration. Obviously, there's combat as well, and it can be quite punishing and tricky, which makes it more, you know, high stakes. I guess to call this a roguelike would be true because you succeed yourself um, as like your heir and all that if you die and can potentially pass stuff along. So there is a roguelite progression, but the tail on one of your playthroughs can be incredibly long. So more like the long dark, you know, not 20 minute spats unless you die very quickly. But it's a wonderful game. But some of the sea is as well, but I've got more time with this. Anyway, that's the bit of preamble. Dare I say a bit of a gush because this thing is near and dear to my heart. We're going to get straight into it with a new game. Beginner game. Uh, if you die, you can only continue with a new captain. If you die, you can reload. No, no, legacy is the way. Legacy is absolutely the way. Aiming assistance, none. Interesting. Um, projectile speed standard, supply consumption standard. Okay, look, at least it's got that quality of life component. Like I said, death is a very real, like it's not a respawn and run back in from a checkpoint. So death is a, a real penalty in this. So I can understand them giving you the option to massage that. That's not for everybody. Um, as much as I love the idea of developer intent, if a game's too hard for you or me, you know, then so be it. But at the same time, I don't know. I think it's a juicy conversation. Do you make your game niche with its difficulty and lock off a larger population that could really enjoy your art? Or do you allow the player to massage the experience? I don't know. I like that. Log of Her Majesty's Locomotive, The Orphean, March 14, 1905. Our expedition to the domains of the dead has been eventful. The Orphean is damaged and in grievous need of repairs and supplies. We are returning in haste to the Reach, where I hope to make port at New Winchester. May God be with us for a thousand deaths wait in the sky. Final entry of Captain Amelia Charity Whitlock, written shortly before her death. So I believe this is a little prologue. A pseudo tutorial thing. Oh, here we go. The Blue Kingdom Transit Relay. And off we go, my little train. Now Q and E should give me little little sprints. Yeah, a little like that. But it builds, you can see it builds heat. And I believe firing your gun. You do have infinite ammo. March 15th, you have returned to the Reach and untamed some... Oh, God, I missed that. My bad. 
I don't know if my gun is active yet, but that's okay. Your journey back from the Blue Kingdom was tumultuous. Your locomotive is damaged, oops, and Captain Whitlock badly wounded. So I think you're the uh, 2IC stepping up XO, some sort of junior rate, maybe the NAV. Uh, as first officer, the crew look to you. The nearest station is New Winchester. Can you get the Orphean there safely? Cruise controls? Oh, that's cool. Scavenge? Much to the relief of your stokers, you find a barrel of fuel among the detritus. Stoker is usually an engineering rate sailor. Uh, a wreck drifts here, uh, less fortunate than you. We should scavenge it for repairs, a crewman suggests. Let's do exactly that. It's the Ozymandias. The wreck hangs in the sky, pocked with recent gunfire. You and the boarding party don your sky suits, garments of waxed canvas lined with felt to protect against the cold of the sky. Two of the crew are whispering as they dress. What business did Captain Whitlock have in the Blue Kingdom anyway? Why the devil did we trespass on the districts of the dead? You silence him. Now is not the time. Leap across to the wreck. The gap between the two engines isn't wide, but the endless fathoms of heaven gape beneath it. Let's go. Leading the way, you jump. Your stomach lurches with vertigo as the stars blaze above you and below. The air of the heavens is thin and torn by unpredictable winds. Then your boots hit the running board of the Ozymandias and your leather, glo uh, leather gloved hands fumble for a hold. One of your companions throws you a line and you lash the two engines together. Only then do the rest of the boarding party follow you. One of them forces open an exterior hatch and you clamber inside. Her interior is cold, unlit, uh, and whistles with wind. Your party's lamps spread buttery light over the narrow, panelled passages. You make your way towards the hold, stepping over bodies crumpled in the corridor. Unfortunately, your way is blocked. A bulkhead has been mangled inward by a well-aimed barrage. Clear the obstruction away, or lead your party on a more precarious path. And these are sort of your, uh, well here you go, iron and veils, um, which is sort of, uh, you know, your strength, intelligence, it's your character sheet. Let's go with iron, that sounds cool. You locate a length of pipe to use as a pry bar and set to work. Give it a go, failure, no good. Memory, as you strain against the stubborn steel, you remember an event from years ago. A boiler explosion had trapped an engineer beneath a tangle of plating and pipe work. The captain was first on the scene, and you were second. Together, you pried the wreckage upward enough for you to crawl beneath it while the captain braced the bar across her back. By all means, take your time, she grunted as you dragged the engineer out. But in the back in the present, the twist, twisted bulkhead yields suddenly. A crewman cries out as its jagged edge bites him. You order him to, uh, taken back to the Orphean while the rest of you press on. The way is clear. You've lost a crew. So I suppose, in a way, if he's mangled and, you know, inoperable, <laughs> that, that counts as lost, which is fair. You've reached the Ozymandias' hold, a ruin of smashed cargo and spilled supplies. Hopefully, somewhere amidst the detritus, you can find parts to repair the Orphean and restock your stores. Conduct a thorough search. Your companions work quickly. The Ozymandias' hull has begun to creak. Your actions on board may have compromised its integrity. Oh dear. Renewed, you find enough food and gear to restock your supplies, and enough spare parts to make necessary repairs to the Orphean. The food will need to be thoroughly thawed, of course, but you've eaten worse in the skies. Oh, cries one of your party, prying the lid off a long crate. Uh, it holds a cannon, still nestled in straw. Another crewman pulls a battered birdcage from a pile of ruined cargo. Within the cage, something winged and, fu uh, and furred opens up uh, a sullen eye. You examine your findings. We've got some supplies. We've got some hull points. Okay, cool. The Ozymandias emits a long, juddering creak. Your boarding party exchange nervous glances. From the chaos of its hold, you have retrieved repairs and supplies and discovered some useful equipment, a gun that could be mounted on your locomotive, and an educated bat. 
Mount the Jerusalem cannon on the Orphean. Liberate a de uh, defiant bat and employ it as a scout. Um, I mean, yeah, let's get the bat. Let's get the bat. Um, the heavens are wide, so locomotives use scouts, like bats, to locate things of interest. Ports, resources, wrecks like this one to scavenge. So he's your scout, basically. You can claim both this and the cannon. Okay, cool. Eyes in the sky. The bat treats its rescue as an inconvenience and immediately begins haggling over pay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you offer to put it back in its damn cage and leave it on the Ozymandias, at which point it becomes more polite. You doubt that it will last. Um, okay, cool. Defiant, diffident. We've got a cranky bat. Very good. Um, mount the Jerusalem cannon. Her own weapons were damaged during your flight from the Blue Kingdom. That uh, leaves you vulnerable. Cool. Fire and Fury. The Cotterill and uh, Hathasage in Jerusalem fire single shells to a good range more or less accurately. You order two of your party to get it back to your vessel and it fit it in immediately. The Ozymandias groans again. The structure shudders spasmodically. I've got a gun. Um, here we go. Uh, press on to the engine room or return to the Orphean. <sighs> this is not without risk. Now let's go. You might find more fuel there, but you had better hurry. This Ozymandias is beginning to tear apart. Let's go. The wreck of the Ozymandias screeches as its metal buckles and tears. You press on through the shuddering corridors, searching frantically for the engine room. Send a smaller party ahead to retrieve fuel. You go yourself and conduct a hasty search. What do we got here? Mirrors, 50-50. Hearts. Um, let's, oh, here we, it's foolish for all of you to go. Send your quickest and lightest to retrieve the fuel while the rest of you return to the Orphean. Hearts is the skill of convincing and enduring. Hmm. Um, no, I want to do this. I like the investigating and deducing. Send the rest of the boarding party back to the Orphean and go alone. Success! There we go. In the nick of time, the Rex engines are choked with an old ash. You search swiftly, aware of every creak in the bulkhead, every tremble that runs through the dead locomotive. Finding several sacks of coal, you drag them to an exterior hatch and fling them across the Orphean before leaping, or across to the Orphean, before leaping after them. Unshackling your locomotive from the Ozymandias, you stoke your engines and steam away, restocked, refueled, repaired and rearmed. Nice. Got some extra fuel. Well, a little adventure there. The writing in this is so good, man. Press F to send out your scout, cost supplies. You can see it chips away at your supplies there. But, might find us something. Scouts, your scout has discovered something. Okay. Let's, uh, can I just click hide, hide that? Thank you. Summoned by Captain Whitlock. The walls of the captain's cabin are lined with a hodgepodge of curios from across the sky. Captain Whitlock lies in bed. Black marks cover her skin like a monstrous brand. When she coughs, coils of acrid smoke pour from her lungs. Oh, jeez. Locomotive's doctor attends to her. Her lips are tight. The captain opens her eyes and draws near. She attempts to smile. Approach the bedside. Um, yeah, let's, let's do that. Her mouth is blistered from the blue fires that dance on her tongue. Her hand grips your arm. Her skin is hot as a kettle. Made arrangements. The Orphean will be yours. Her voice is just as a rasp of burned meat breath. Ugh. But promise she breaks off to a scream, uh, a word in a language that uh, was not made for human mouths. When she resumes speaking English, she is weaker. Her request little more than a gasp. Promise me one last thing. Promise. Promise her you will obey her last command. Make no promise. Tell her to rest. Pull away. Demand to know why she took... No, you know what? Whatever it is, you'll see it done. She sinks back relieved. Ah, oh, all in my will, she gasps. Be a better. She breaks off 
as the sigils burned into her bones flare, growing cherry red through her flesh and skin. Be a better captain than I. The effort exhausts her. She sinks back into the scorched pillows and a twisting, frantic fever. Jesus. Well, horrible magic has been put on her. Um, the walls of the captain's cabin are lined with a hodgepodge of curios. No, no, we, we covered that already. Take your leave. You have an engine to command. Onwards. Oh, other business. You leave the cabin and the scorched stink of its air behind, then return to the bridge. New Winchester is farther than you would like, and the captain hasn't long left. So build steam to shoot your gun. Kicks you a little, it kicks you back as well. Okay. Now we, we found, oh, I've pressed tap. What has that done? That's what my scout found. Okay, that's cool. What is going on here? Is it a fight you want? It's a fight you'll get. No, I'm back to front. I'm confused. Oh, look at this. I'm landing some big hits. No. <gasps> look at that. Dude, this guy's getting mangled. Uh-oh. Uh, game? Why, why are we hitching? What, what, game? Are we seriously crashing right now? Is that what's happening? Nope. That was weird. Uh, the, yeah, the game, uh, the game hit pretty hard just then. And now it's doing the same. What is going on? Let's just make sure. I don't think I'm, I've got anything going in the background or anything like that. That was strange. That was very strange. But so it goes. Um, okay, where are we? The, uh, the Reach Marauder is defeated. You prepare to board the buckled wreckage, poised to plunder the plunderers. Behind you, someone is humming a song of victory. Raid the remains, strip it for repairs. Well, we managed to get out of that pretty much unscathed, so we don't need the repairs. Uh, marauders pillage homesteads and hunt travellers all across the reach. They often carry stolen valuables. Uh, Ill-got gains. Your boarding party returns with wallets and watches, cufflinks, lockets and keepsakes. You store them in a safe to be pawned when, if, you make it back to port. You now have 31 sovereigns. Okay. Now, where were we? I think we're trying to get to that. Oh, another one. Get wrecked, mate. Raid the remains. Oh. They've gotten gains. Let's go. I think we're going to this. New Winchester. Here we go. Arrival at New Winchester. You coast into the bustle, the din, the soot and the steam of Wolvesy Station. It is clogged with other engines, scrappy mining locomotives from Lustrum Way, weathered explorers gleaming with frost, sleek company vessels with bright brass fittings. No sooner have you pulled into the sidings than a brusque station master bustles over. He requests to come on board. I must speak with your captain, he insists, brandishing a ledger. The usual formalities. Um, look to the Orphan's doctor. He's just appeared at your shoulder. His face is solemn. His hat in his hand. He lowers his eyes. Oh no, we know what that means. 
the passing. The crew exchange bleak, wordless looks. The Orpheon itself feels suddenly more empty. The station master looks confused. You inform him that, unfortunately, Captain Whitlock has just passed. Ah, he says neutrally. Sorry to hear that. Very sad, very sad. He waits for what he considers an appropriate minute and a half before continuing. Alas, even amidst tragedy, the cogs of bureaucracy must turn. If Captain Whitlock is deceased, the station authority requires our answers from the first officer. He dons a set of spectacles and locates his pen. It will be relatively painless. Name, background, purpose of visit, etc. Shall we begin? We shall. And then, you know, I guess we do a character create sort of thing. Create your captain. Today, London lies between the stars. Her new empire unfolds across the heavens. But 10 years ago, before the Northern Gate was open, before the renewed Empress led her people into the skies, it lay in a vast cavern beneath the earth, which was Sunless Sea. Deep, dark, marvellous. Who were you then? Who was I then and not now? A street urchin, a soldier, a poet, an academic, a zailer, I like that, a revolutionary, yuck. Um, high iron, skill of over, oh, I do like that. I like that. Let's just be a soldier, straight up. You were a soldier, you served in Her Majesty's military, but how exactly? In the uh, Commissariat? In the Corps of Royal Engineers? Oh, that sounds pretty cool. In the Royal Horse Guards. Increase hearts, mirrors, or veils. Um, let's go mirrors, the skill of investigating juicing, because I like that as well. That's cool. I guess you can just randomize it all as well, but I, this like, I don't like character creators where you just make your stupid face and then you put a helmet on and go into third person and stare at the back of your head for 50 hours. I cannot understand how people give a shit about customizing your face in these games when you never see it. The only person that sees it is a video game AI character that doesn't exist that's talking to your character. But this, this is interesting. We're developing backstory. I like this. This helps the role-playing method. Um, choose an ambition. What does winning mean to you? The truth, fame, or wealth? Oh. Be warned, this is a demanding ambition that has already completed wealth or flat fame. Oh. Let's, uh, let's go for fame. That sounds cool. You will immortalize your exports, or exploits, sorry, in the Song of the Sky. For centuries, people have launched themselves into the unknown in the hope of making a name for themselves. You're sure that you'll succeed. After all, you never heard of anyone who didn't. Gather stories of your exploits and write about them in New Winchester. Let's go. Create your captain. Ah, uh, cool. Random, random avatar. Oh, look at this. A bit of a gentlemanly dandy. We can do that. Um, a randomized name. Menzies. Citizen Menzies. That's not bad. Nurse O'Connor? Oh, I don't know about that. No, no, I mean, you can't male nurses, of course. What am I saying? I guess I was thrown just for a moment. I can't say I've ever been a nurse. Uh, Intended Reverend Whitlock. Principal... I don't even know what half these titles are. Sister Armoured? Com... Mm. Nurse Ali. Comrade. Brother... Brother Brown. Sir Hughes. That'll do. That'll do. Sir Hughes, the soldier of the Royal Engineers with an ambition of fame. Let's go. I like that a lot. Okay. Provisioning. Yeah, so we got to make sure that we uh, have food. Scouts have discovered something. Okay, that's fine. The reading of the will. Three weeks have passed. This morning, Captain Whitlock received a simple memorial service. Her body was consigned to a necropolis train bound for the serene mausoleum. Now you sit with a handful of her relatives in the threadbare offices of her solicitors. A methodical notary is reading the will. The captain was wealthy once, but squandered her capital on mysterious expenses before her expedition to the Blue Kingdom. It's all so mysterious, I love it. And the thing is, you don't have to give a shit about this main thread. You can just go and do whatever you want and make your own journey. I love it. The captain's relatives 
Uh, listen to the end, from whom she was mostly estranged, are clearly wondering why you are here. Yes, me too. True to her word. In a final codicil, or codicil, codicil okay, uh, the notary announces, Captain Whitlock confirmed that possession of the Orphean was to pass to its first officer. He peers at you with dry grey eyes. This includes a certain black box contained in the Orphean's hold. Captain Whitlock's final request was that, at a time of your choosing, you transport said box to an address in London. He hands you an address card and deposit it there. You are not to look inside. She gave no explanation. And that's it. You're captain now. The Orphean is yours. Cool, so we've got Captain Whitlock's legacy. You can investigate the black box. You've been bequeathed a large black box, which once belonged to the captain. Look at it, it's weird. And I got a hundred bucks. Look at that. The clamoring central st oh, this is Woolsey Station. The clamoring central station of New Winchester. A place of steam and smut and thundering iron. Here, you can find people willing to pay for a skilled captain's services. Okay. So what can we do? What can we do? Investigate the black box. Captain Whitlock left it to you in the hold of the Orphan. Oh, let's go have a bit of a squeeze, suss it out. Captain Whitlock left it to you in the hold of the Orphan. Her will described it only as a black box, a description you consider to be an unhelpful understatement. It is a casket of black basalt, longer than you are tall, unadorned with a small recess that contains a keyhole. The thing must weigh most of a ton. It stands upright in a corner of the hold, where the crew have pushed it out of the way. Consider what to do with it. Whether you obey is up to you. Try to remember when Captain Whitlock acquired the box. Examine the box. Sell the box as a curiosity. Uh, consult with an academic. Oh, wow, look at this. There's so much. Pick the lock yourself. So there's all this crazy shit. Detonate the lock with a modest explosion. So talk about a lot of choices and, and sort of player agency. Try to remember. It was the subject of speculation among the crew. Preparations. Captain Whitlock had it brought on board just before your ill-fated expedition to the Blue Kingdom. It was empty then. You know because you saw the lid of the box carried on board separately and assembled in the hold. It's not empty now. It is sealed and even heavier than before. But you left for the Blue Kingdom shortly after the box was delivered and made no stops on the way. So what was inside the box now Captain Whitlock found in the Blue Kingdom? Okay, so it's relatively recent. Wow. Okay. Examine the box. It has the dimensions of a sarcophagus plundered from the tomb of some forgotten prince of Egypt. Closed fast. There are no carvings or inscriptions on it. The join where the lid meets the body is too thin to admit even a knife blade. There are no holes by which light or air might find their way in. It is impossible to see inside without opening it. Even the keyhole has been engineered in such a way as to prevent peeking. The recess with the keyhole, though, as far as you can determine, that is a more recent addition to the box. The stone has been drilled and chiseled away to create space for a modern metal lock. So maybe it's not meant to be locked. Mm. Consider what to do with it. Captain Whitlock had a specific request. Whether you obey it is up to you. Decision, decisions. The last request of Captain Amelia Whitlock was for the box to be transported to a specific address in London. Alternatively, you could perhaps find someone willing to purchase it as a curiosity. And if you knew what was inside, you might be able to command a higher price. Okay. Um, no, I'm happy to sort of see it through. You know, perhaps not. Perhaps not. We've got so much stuff to do. Hire on crew. Your voyages have grown perilous of late. Well, we are short a little bit of crew, but... Let's have a look at the incautious driver. I specialize in test driving, but I'm looking for something quieter. Uh, the driver indicates a crashed engine still smoking. Like that. Without the screaming. Officers require a sign-on fee. So we can sign him on, but it's going to set us back $20. Allow the driver to join your crew. What harm can it do? This will get you a chief engineer who increases your iron by six, your hearts by two, and your affiliation establishment by one. That's cool, yeah. Had those stats. 
Officers and mascots, very, very good. Brave or fearless, the driver board's eager to get started. I recently parted ways with the Windward Company, they explained. Personally, I think a crash a week isn't so bad, but they disagreed. Oh well, live and learn. <laughs> oh, I like this dude already. Um, okay, so if we go to profile, that's just us, right? Affiliations with the establishment, level two. Um, officers. There's our chief engineer there, but we might be able to pull up. There's our hold. So it's actually quite complex, all the stuff going on. Here we go. So that's like my iron, which is humongous, 25, but it's plus six. So it, it is a stat sheet, and that would be from the, uh, the driver that we added in. Then opportunity, the fastidious inspector. Excuse me, Captain. A woman pushes through the crowd toward you. She is short and square-shouldered in a neat black suit and polished shoes. She shows you the case of her pocket watch. It is embossed with the crown and hourglass of London's horological office. The body responsible for ensuring time is consistent across uh, the empire. Oh, that's cool. I can interact over here as well. I'm hoping to book passage to Port Prosper, she says, slipping the watch away. I can, of course, pay. Absolutely. That seems like the perfect opportunity. Pay sounds promising. It does indeed. Let's get rid of this uh, screen here. Thank you. Uh, the locomotive I was on broke down following a boiler rupture. The chief engineer's fault, I suspect. A gentleman fonder of brandy than of diligence. Here, an initial sum to seal our bargain. Prosper lies to the north northeast of New Winchester. Not that there is such a thing as north southeast or indeed west out here. Instead, London cartographers picked four of the brighter, more reliable stars visible from the Empress's new palace and named them northeast, south, and west. Londoners value familiarity. Fair enough, I can understand that. So we got 50 bucks, and the fastidious uh, inspector has joined us. And I suppose maybe that'd be. Uh, somewhere noted not strictly in our hull so you've got storage space which is mostly dedicated to fuel and supplies possessions ha yeah here we go and everything comes as a form of currency i always love this like if you gather a cool tale of terror out there exploring and all that you will have that as a currency and then say you meet some i don't know some dandy blokes playing cricket or something because i think that's that's something on an island and you want to hang out with them you can share your story of terror so you trade it as a currency uh, as it were just not a physical tangible one and that will you know potentially get you favor or, or trade in return i think it's phenomenal turning the most well intangible things into essentially a tangible currency it's not something you can do in real life obviously not truly but something that video games absolutely can do and it's kind of the only forum, you know, like a like a game system, you couldn't do it in a story. But uh, yeah, it's the only sort of uh, setting I would think that you could do something like that. So criminally underused and such a very clever uh, concept. Anyway, can I save easily? Save and exit, straightforward. Okay, cool. Shame about that hitch. I wonder what that was about. But you know, we persevered and got through. So it goes sometimes, I suppose. This game slaps. It's so good. It's awesome to hear that it's on consoles as well. And like I said, if you're uh, if you think about dipping your toe, apparently this is the greatest version that there has ever been because they've added even more stuff. Um, I will point out that like this world map is humongous. See, that's where we were in here and going all the way out here. It's very risky as well. It's quite easy to sort of die at sea in that as well. So you have to be really careful about mapping the world and learning the ports and only taking baby steps because you can only afford so many supplies it's all very expensive but this is the reach and then we've got albion uh the blue kingdom eletheria uh so we've got a whole bunch of can we zoom out even further like if i press map or anything no but just to give you an idea this is only one instanced map so this game is unreal in its depth and just writing and uh, ability to explore and, and just as an adventure setting. I love exploration more and more these days. Anyway, team, thanks again for joining me. Might just leave it there for the time being, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.